What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today we wrap up season number one and jump into the off season, heading into season number two. Now, you see Bowling Green, man. Hopefully one day we could be where Bowling Green is. They're unbeaten right now. They might have a chance at a BCS ball game. You know what I mean? That would be dope for them. We're trying to land some recruits. The one guy or the one position, and as we look ahead, they, they lose to Toledo. They were ranked number five. Ain't going to be ranked number five no more. But the one position that we probably didn't need was halfback. The only guy we made but to land is halfback. And we were kind of more more on the pass-heavy side of things. I think that we threw the ball more with this program in year one than any other program in any other year on this here channel. And I don't know what it is, man. It must be the last name, Dawkins, that this attracts strong safeties and free safeties to come and ball out for your boy because we won the Thorpe Award. And, I mean, DJ had a solid season. I just didn't think we were going to be up for any awards at all. Matt Leonard, he goes back to back. If we go back to real life, you know, 04, 05, he won the Heisman. Now it's 05, 06, he wins the Heisman again. No Reggie Bush. It's Lindell White up in there. And no events young. That's crazy. But, hey, it is what it is. It's just the video games. Crazier things have happened. But look at our stats. Like I said, we threw the ball 295 times. I want to say that's probably close to the highest that I've ever done. I might have gone over 300, you know, one season, maybe even with Courtney Johnson. Uh, I know that we threw the ball a lot with ATU, but it's really only two. Um, Aaron Coley. A lot of the other times we would just run the ball a lot. So, you know, I mean, I feel like we ran the ball a lot in this dynasty, but Adam Irvin, he still had a solid, solid season, averaging 5.1 yards per carry, only 195 attempts, and uh, 1,000. 10 yards. When I say 1,100, 10 isn't really a number. It is technically, but it also ain't technically. Uh, but yeah, so moving forward, I want to probably put more points towards recruiting. Um, I do think that these guys who are seniors or about to be seniors are going to do just fine when it comes to the offseason program, spring football, whatever you may call it. But I do think that recruiting is going to be necessary because we got to get, not only do we have to get depth, usually on these younger teams, we do not have, or these like, you know, startup teams, um, we do not have that much depth. You know, when you're first starting a dynasty, the depth is kind of waning. And it more so does have to do with talent, not bodies, but talent wise. Uh, so we got to get deeper. So recruiting is going to be a must. So I'm probably going to put as much, as many points as I can to recruiting to try to build up this program and to keep discipline probably where it's at and lower um, training, which does suck for the guys who are on the squad. Uh, but I do feel like we've got to kind of kickstart this dynasty off better with our first opportunity uh, when it comes to off-season recruiting. Here go the championship game results. There you see it. There you have it. And now we're going to look at the bowl game results. One day, I think we're going to be up in here. One day, hopefully soon, we will be up in here. Uh, I'm going to just let you know that this game continues to surprise me. This game was my favorite growing up. When it first came out, I was on this heavy. I got NCAA 06 and Madden 06. I did that for a while. Ever since like 2002, I would always get Madden in 06 all the way up. Madden and NCAA all the way up until Madden 25, NCAA 14. And this game has always been my favorite. And it continues to surprise me um, Yeah, even to today. So it is. I'll, I will show you what I mean in a minute or two. When it comes to Captain One Bowl, Alabama falls to Wisconsin. Florida beats Rutgers in the Sugar Bowl Fiesta Bowl. Michigan beats Texas, and then in the Orange Bowl, Miami, they beat Georgia, and then USC falls to Oklahoma, so Oklahoma gets some revenge from the Orange Bowl loss, which would have been the year before this game came out. So recruiting 40, training 27, discipline 33. I usually keep everything in the 30s, but again, I want to try to recruit better. And then here goes the guys who are leaving. A lot of guys you probably don't even know because they barely got playing time barely saw the field uh which does suck because i love spreading the wealth yes i would love to have one dominant receiver like an aaron coley but i love to spread the football around it might not work that well for fantasy but i do think it works well for actual football if you know what i'm saying all right so those are the guys who are leaving nobody is transferring but we did get a bunch of people that wanted to transfer to us. 
And this is the most that I've had in any one year in any of my dynasties. We've got a quarterback from Oklahoma. He already registered it, so by the time he has a chance to play for us, he's going to be a senior. Halfback from Arizona, wide receiver from Cal. Tied in from Oklahoma State, SAU. My baby's giving me a center in Iowa with a D tackle. Now, I'm not quite sure why this has happened. Maybe it has to do with the fact that we put more points into recruiting. I do not know. I do not know, but hey. This is the first time, and it is a first time for everything, as they say. So I am definitely excited, but we will not reap those benefits until year number three because this is not today's college football. We could transfer and instantly play. You got to sit out a year. Remember the rules from back in the day. So these are the guys that we are going after, and these are the guys that we were able to get. Lou Washington did not, I mean, he kind of, he qualified, but sometimes guys just don't sign. Sometimes, sometimes they're recruited and they don't want to play college football for whatever reason. More power to you. Go do your thing. That center, we were on top of his list, but he's from Kansas, so he decided to go play for the Jayhawks, which again is his choice. Lost his middle linebacker um, to New Mexico, uh, New Mexico State, I believe, or New Mexico, one of those. And then, but everybody else we ended up getting. So we missed out on three guys. Our recruiting class is quite small, but you have to cut people once you get up to 70 people on your roster. If you get over 70 or 71 people, you got to start cutting people. I never like cutting people. Uh, I do it sometimes with Indiana. I've had to. I've never really shown it because it's usually guys that aren't going to see the field anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we had to let, uh, we didn't let anybody go so far. We're up to 67 bodies on the roster and with that huge transfer class coming in next season i really didn't feel a need to go too gung-ho on the scholarships and on top of that we only had 48 points to work with and that's what leads me to believe that because we put all those points in recruiting that those guys that we got in the transfer window took up some of our, some of our recruiting points that's the only thing that i can think of because with indiana we had like 265 recruiting points and our off-season video that came out a couple of days ago. And I kept that at like 35. Now, maybe because we're a six-star program and get some more. I don't. I do not know. I could not tell you from the bottom of my heart. But all I do know is that having 48 points to work with, I think we had a pretty good class. Um, hopefully, we can get some needs during the in-season process. Because the running back that we got, I think, is probably going to come in to be the best running back on the roster. I think he just passed. Yeah, I think on the depth chart, he is number one. Irvin is still going to get a bunch of playing time. I might even start Irvin just because he's a senior. And I want to have that composure out there. But the new guy that we did get in the in, in, in the in season process, I think, is going to be the lead bell cow. And I do think our team is going to look a little bit different offensively. I think we may focus on the ground game more than we did last year um i think clark is going to be a solid quarterback for us i just don't think it's going to be as good as freddie turner and i think our running back situation is going to be probably the deepest and i think most of our receivers are coming back so i mean who knows our receivers are going to be there receivers are going to be good how well our quarterback is going to play i think is going to be a little bit up in the air and it seems like our defense is going to take a step forward from last year hopefully that is going to be the case so definitely do not want to turn the ball over so we may we may try to focus on the ground game we'll see what happens there so like i said man i'm excited for this season it's going to be ex i'm excited to see what those guys who are going to be registered not registered but transfer players are going to do first like i said dixon we can't register him he has already been registered uh, but everybody else that has a chance to be registered i'm going to register especially if they're not going to really affect the depth chart or I feel like we don't need them in case somebody gets hurt. Uh, so that's basically what I do. If I feel like we, we may need you, then yes, I'm definitely not going to register you. If I feel like it will do you some good and the team some good, I am going to redshirt you. And that's what we done did. That's what we done done. All righty. All right, T. So moving forward, um, the schedule. It's not going to be that crazy. We got Colorado, Colorado State. Those two programs will always be on the schedule unless... We out surpass them, which I don't think is going to happen because we're only going to go after three star recruits. There's going to be a four star recruit that, that's dying to come to our program. We're just not going to do it. Boise State, I think, has never had a four star recruit. Maybe, maybe they've had one or two, 
from the last time I checked, but from what I remember, they never landed a four-star guy. So I kind of want to keep that here. So even if we do get up to a point where four stars and five stars want to come to our program, we're still going to just keep it at three stars. It's something that I wanted to do. Uh, but then, you know, the thrill of winning a championship and getting the best talent available, you know, I mean, that kind of takes over. But with Indiana still going strong, that is where our juggernaut powerhouse dynasty is. This is where we try to make some noise being a smaller program like a Boise State was, like a Fresno State was. Uh, Fresno State made some headway, especially when they had David Carr. They were kind of in the national spotlight just a little bit. Not crazy, but, you know, a little bit. Anyways, man. Here are your top 25 polls. These are the best teams in the nation. They list all 119. Are we in the top 25? You should know better than that. Are we in the top 30? You should know better than that. We are ranked 100 18. So not quite the bottom, but darn near the bottom. We have a D plus overall rating, D minus. I mean, D for offense, D for defense, and a B. Is that B plus? A B plus for special teams. How that works, I don't know, but hey, it's working. Anyways, that is going to do it. It should be a fun year of Colorado AM football with the Hawks. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And until we meet again, my friends, peace, love, hustle.